this is a Roman gladius. It's the sword that the legionnaires used. And you can see it's not like a giant slashing sword like a Viking sword or anything like this, but the Spartan sword, the Xiphos, was about half the length of this. And there's a story that when a young Spartan warrior was first issued his Xiphos by his mother, he remarked on how short it was. And his mother said to him, add a step to it, meaning get that much closer to the enemy. So who were the Spartans? That's what I want to talk about today. Of all, the reason why I'm picking the Spartans to start with is of all the cultures in the world, other than say, or along with the Samurai, the Zulu, and the Maasai, the Spartans were probably the premier warrior society that ever lived. And so a great place to start off our, our discussion of the warrior archetype. Now, uh, for comparison, let's compare the Spartans to the Athenians just to give us a sense of who they were. If we could beam a an Athenian from ancient days into our contemporary world today, the Athenian would fit absolutely right in, no problem at all, because Athens was a cosmopolitan city, a seaport open to the world with uh, diversity all the way around. They had courts of law, drama, sculpture, um, corruption. The Athenians would be absolutely fit in today and, and without a beat. But if we could beam an ancient Spartan into here and have him sit right here, he would be like somebody from another planet, and he would utterly despise us. He would look around at the society with its emphasis on hyper-individualism, the pursuit of money, of pleasure, of distraction, of stimulation with its, the society, with its partisanship, lack of unity, and he would just shake his head and say, our worst dreams, our worst nightmares have come to pass. So let's continue, let me, let me try to give you a sense of who the ancient Spartans were with a few stories. Again, we'll contrast them with Athenians. There's a story of a Spartan and an Athenian kind of bragging to each other. And to understand the story, you have to know that the, the river of Athens is the Kephissos, and the river at Sparta is, is the Evrotus. And the Athenian is bragging about wars between Athens and Sparta, and he says, we have buried many Spartans beside the Kephissos. And the Spartan says, yes, but we have buried no Athenians beside the Evrotus meaning they never got that far. Another story, Spartan and Athenian, is a Spartan was visiting at Athens and his Athenian host threw uh, an event for him with lots of people and wine and food and all that. And the Athenian was bragging to the Spartan and he said, he pointed out someone else at the, at the event and he said, that man over there is the most famous sculptor in all of Greece. And that man over there is the most illustrious actor in the, all of the Athenian stage. And the Spartan pointed to one of the servants of his own group and he said, yes, and that man there makes a very tasty bowl of soup. There was a law in Sparta that the roof beams of the houses could not be adorned in any way. They had to be just taken right from the tree and just put in, you know, the branches cut off, but just put in as roof beams. So again, a Spartan was visiting in Athens and, uh, and his host was showing off his house and, he, and the Spartan noticed that the beams in the Athenian's house were square and they were adorned and had beautiful designs on them. And he asked the Athenian if trees grew square in Athens. And the Athenian laughed and said, no, of course not. They, they grow round as everywhere else. And the Spartan said, and if they grew square, would you make them round? The ideal Spartan remark or quip was always short and pithy. And our word laconic comes from Laconia, which was the region of Greece that Sparta was the principal city of. And one of the, the, one of the classic examples was King Leonidas at the Battle of Thermopylae when the Persian King Xerxes demanded that the Spartans lay down their arms. His response was in two words, molon labe, come and take them. But the greatest, the shortest one of all was maybe 70 years, 100 years after Thermopylae when to the north of Greece in Macedonia, King Philip of Macedonia, the father of Alexander the Great, had risen to power and he truly did have the strongest army in that part of the world. And he was threatening to come down and invade Greece. And, he, and in fact, he did. And he sent a message to Sparta and he said, if my army invades Sparta, we will surely destroy the city. 
And the Spartans responded with just one word, if.